Hi. Hey, Luke. Vince Palomero here again. Decided to do a little stream of conscious, consciousness video, whatever. Um, I get a lot of people in the comment sections of the videos and just messages in general saying stuff like, uh, so Vince, what's your views on fill in the blank? I keep telling you guys, I'm a five time author, five books, okay? And awkward uh, Neil down here. Um, this book, my fifth book, my latest book, this came out a couple years ago, still sells every week. Honest Answers About the Murder of President John F. Kennedy, A New Look at the JFK Assassination. Yep, this is, has all your answers. It's about 500 pages, massively documented and researched. Has the biggest JFK assassination bibliography known to mankind. Has the biggest list of all the witnesses that the shots came from the front. The biggest list of all the medical evidence, witnesses. And uh, yeah, get this, get this. It's on Amazon and paperback and Kindle. I prefer the paperback, but it's just me. Very honored, grateful to have both uh, versions out there for people to get though. And uh, yeah, also another awkward kneel down. Uh, here we go. I have a chapter in this latest book. It's selling very well by uh, Jack Roth, Killing Kennedy. No relation to that stupid book by Bill O'Reilly and uh, also not related to the Killing Kennedy by the late Harry Livingstone, who actually liked him. That's in several of his books, but I have a whole chapter in here. It's doing very well. Very good book all the way around, too. Don't just get it because of me, but I've got a nice chapter in there. It's doing very well. So, where are we going with this? Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I appreciate all your support. And uh, channel's up. It's not monetized at all. Largely because a lot of the material is copyrighted. So I couldn't make money off copyright material anyway. And uh, it's a labor of love. You know, even the money I make off my books, which is, you know, it's decent, but I work for a living. I'm not in this for the money. What cracks me up is the people making all the money are the lone nutters. They're the ones that are making the money. Clint Hill, Gerald Blaine, uh, Gerald Posner, Vince Bugliosi, I mean, all those books, Norman Mailer. They're the ones with the massive publicity of oh, Bill O'Reilly. The massive hype, the massive mainstream media support. They're the ones making all the money. So I hate, I cringe when I hear that, you guys just do it for the money. Uh, no, the vast majority of us work for a living and the money we make is basically break even. It's a nice little pocket change, you know, don't get me wrong, the book sells every week, it's decent, but I'm not in it for the money. Never was in this for the money. That's obscene to me, to be in this for the money. Get serious. But uh, hey, having said all that now, some there's some exceptions to the role, the late David Lifton, did great in all his books. Harry Livingstone, who I just mentioned, the late Harry Livingstone, did good. He had a couple of best selling books, High Treason 1 and 2. In fact, High Treason 1 was a bestseller twice. So, hey, more power to them and anybody else who's made money and stuff. But there's a stigma attached to conspiracy people that, oh, you're just in for the money. Bull fucking shit. <laughs> okay, so enough of that crap bullshit. Pardon my Swahili. But anyway, uh, I don't know, it's kind of in a video mood here, so, uh, yeah, we're coming up on the 60th anniversary, and I'm not doing any more conference presentations, I said them all, they're all on my YouTube channel, after a while, just repeat yourself, and why keep repeating yourself over and over again, again, they're all on YouTube, then I've done tons of podcasts, they're all on YouTube and online, you know, I got the five books, some in other people's books, just like I mentioned, but Jack Ross book. Um, you know, there's a coup in Camelot on DVD, Blu-ray, and on Amazon Prime for streaming and whatnot. Got the Minute Kill Kennedy, originally on VHS and DVD. Now it's on YouTube. Um, I'm in that UK documentary. It's done very well and it's been shown many times on, uh, how do I put it, UK TV or whatever. It's been on several, like Australia and this, that, and the other. Even though I can't stand the documentary overall because a lot of lone nut crap, they did a good job of me. Uh, and I got a Meredith Mantic, the daughter of David, Dr. David Mantic, 
who I was on the Medicaid Kennedy and Akuda Camelot with. She's coming up with a major documentary called The Invisible Witness. And uh, it's already on Internet Movie Database, but there's no information about exactly when it's going to be released. She worked with me for hours filming me in 2018, 2019. So that should be seen in a day soon. June 25th, I turned 57. I am 56 going on 57. And some people ask, hey, Vince, man, you look really good for your age. Well, secret is I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I'm married, very, very happily married, but we don't have kids. We just have a cute little cat named Ziggy. And uh, yeah, very happy, content. I do this as almost like a hobby, a labor of love, but uh, not in it for the money, baby. This is just, that's why I put a lot of stuff out there free. Look at my blogs, plural, you know, these videos, you know, not making any money off anything. So, uh, yeah. Hey, I tell you, it's a really nice day out there. Look at that, man. Look at that. Woo-hoo-hoo. Look at that. But, uh, anyway, yeah. So I guess I'll see you guys later on. Take care. Bye. Hello. Another one of those outside on the balcony videos. Beautiful day. Hot day. Just a quick little video here just to let you guys know that uh, I really appreciate all the support, comments, feedbacks, feedback, I should say, likes, etc., etc., regarding my channel here. Like I just said in my latest video, um, yeah, the well's getting really dry. It's getting tougher and tougher. Although you wouldn't know it lately because I've been posting stuff. I heard some people's suggestions here that it's getting very tough to find new material, and I've seen that other people, other channels, with historical and Kennedy related stuff, they're having a tough time as well. There's only so much you can find and plunder, and you know, it is what it is. Plus, you also got to worry about copyrights and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, you guys are funny though. You guys keep saying, keep them coming, keep them coming. Well, it's getting tougher and tougher to keep them coming. Just giving you a little forewarning there as I uh, show a little bit of the sky. You like it? Look at that. Isn't that slick? That's pretty damn good. Look at that. Hope you're not getting seasick or anything. Anyway, um, this video, as I reach down a little awkwardly, I highly, highly recommend this. And no, uh, I'm not going to put this on uh, my YouTube channel, copyright and so forth, and it's way too long. JFK Revisited the Complete Collection. It's a two DVD, two Blu-ray set. Oliver Stone and the great Jim D. Eugenio. You know, everybody knows the, uh, let's keep this up here, I guess. The uh, JFK movie came out in late 1991, you know, 91 into 92. Fantastic movie, warts and all. You know, there's the three tramps in there that were soon after being debunked. You know, the police records came out to show they really were just three tramps. And a few other little warts and up. But other than that, it's fantastic, fabulous movie. Uh, won a couple Academy Awards, was nominated in several other categories. Made, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Still shown to this day. Still a tremendous seller on VHS and L DVD and Blu-ray. It's the greatest JFK assassination movie ever and ever will be. Well bold pronouncement. This is the best JFK documentary ever and probably ever will be. I'm proud of the Men Who Killed Kennedy that I was on, part seven. There's nine parts. That's a real warts and all series. But still very good overall. Essential. I'm, I'm very proud of Akuma and Camelot. Very proud of that. Um, that UK documentary I did last year is good for me. I don't like the low nut crap that's on there. And Sarah Wex on there and they gave really short shrift. That one's just called The Assassination of JFK, I think. This one is essential, essential. You got the two hour version that was shown on Showtime and you got the four hour version, okay? Um, that was available for streaming and whatnot. So again, DVD or Blu-ray, take your pick whichever you want. You got two of each. There's also a great audio commentary for the two hour version by Jim DiEugenio and Oliver Stone. Tremendous, highly recommended. Um, 30 years after the, you know, the Oliver Stone JFK movie comes you know, this movie, and uh, I guess the only wart in this one, it's a very minor wart, a big scheme of things would be, subject to more verification, it turns out Elmer Todd's initials are on CE399ET, 
Um, you might have seen that in the education forum, some other things. Very minor, big scheme of things. There's still tremendous problems with Magic Bullet E399 as far as the provenance, chain of custody, the condition, etc. Still tons of problems with it. But the ET may have been solved. Jim Diagena said he's going to have a colleague go to the archives. It does seem weird. Dr. Mantic held the bullet in his hand, didn't see the initials. The late John Hunt did the same thing. I think there was someone else. All that, and then all of a sudden, lo and behold, there's initials on there. It def definitely grist for the mill for people who think that it was added later on. That opens up a can of worms because you can't prove or disprove that, in my opinion, if the initials were added later day. But uh, in any event, again, there's so many more problems. CE 39, that's one of many. But highly recommended because it's very diverse, 30 some speakers. And a lot, unlike a lot of other documentaries that only have like a handful of speakers or whatnot, this focuses on, you know, the forensics and about JFK's foreign policy, foreign and domestic policy, and the reasons why. So it's not just, you know, who done it, it's why done it. And it goes to all those details and just tremendous, tremendous job. Jim D. Eugene and Oliver Stone should be proud of this. And last but not least, as I reach down awkwardly again, highly recommend you get my latest book on the answers about the murder of President John F. Kennedy and a look at the JFK assassination. Any questions about the assassination for me? Come on. I'm not going to sit there and write a book online. You have to get this. It's about 500 pages. It's my take on the case. And all your questions can be answered in this. But I highly recommend that documentary. If I be so bold, I highly recommend my book. Just it's a really good overview on the assassination. It's got some new material with it too. And uh, yeah, it might be slim pickings as far as new videos. It's gonna be sporadic. Like I said, the well's dry, I've put everything up. I have over 1,100 videos. If you check the date, the vast majority are from this past couple of years. Ever since early 2021, when you know, the pandemic really kicked in, quarantine, work from home, etc., I went nuts uploading so much. I don't have anything more to upload unless you know I come across something like a plunder or whatnot. You know how that goes. But um, okay, thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. I'll let you enjoy a little bit of the outside again. There you go. There's the sky. Look at that. All right. Oh, in case you're wondering, I'm six foot six, tall guy. I'm also 56. I know I don't look it. Secret is, I do not smoke. Never did. I don't drink. Hate alcohol. I've only had a tiny bit in my entire life. And I'm happily married, but we do not have kids. So I probably just don't have any stress and good genes and whatnot, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. Bye. E. Vince Palomare here again, back by popular demand. People seem to really like some of my outdoor videos. You can hear the birds chirping, see the beautiful sky, see the trees behind me, all that kind of stuff. Something different. It's kind of like my fireside chat, but it's not fireside, it's sun side, sky side, nature side. But anyway, just want to go over a few things. It's all personal opinion, but um, my five favorite JFK assassination books to start out with. I've read hundreds, truly I have. I have many books in my library. You probably saw another video, it's been updated since, but it shows my collection. I have quite a few JFK assassination books, Secret Service and uh, related books too. And uh, yeah, like I said, I've read all the classics. I've read all the authors since that time, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, New Millennium and beyond. And um, while there's many books that are, have a lot to off offer, there's a lot of books that in my opinion are very dated now, that they were good for the time, but in all due respect, just again, it's just dated. Yes, what our level of knowledge was in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, before the assassination records review board for the file releases, Etc. Etc. Well, with all that in mind, here are my top five JFK assassination books. In no particular order, although I would say this one's my favorite. Very favorite. This is The JFK Assassination by author and genius James D. Eugenio. This used to be called Reclaiming Parkland. This is the updated paperback edition from 2018. 
with a Ford by Oliver Stone, who is obviously with um, Jim DiEugenio, came up with a terrific two hour JFK Revisited through the looking glass. And there's the four hour version, I forget the exact title, might have jumbled them up, but the two hour version is terrific, and the four hour version is even better. And that's coming out next month. Today's day is June 10th, 2022. Any of it, this book is just fantastic. Very well written, witty, funny. Yes, he takes on Reclaiming History by Vince Bugliosi, but so much more. It's, it's excellent on the whole case and like a witty, well written, funny in parts. Just really, really recommend this. Couldn't recommend this higher, highly, higher, stronger, or whatever. <laughs> it's over 500 pages. You can tell it's not scripted. So you're going to get the ums and ahs and little errors like that. But who cares, right? You love it. Uh, second amazing book. This came out last year, 2021. Last Second in Dallas by Josiah Tink Thompson. A masterpiece. Really, truly is. Um, to put my faith back into the uh, House Select Committee's acoustic evidence, I kind of had given up the ship on that, as I say in my latest book, on Honest Answers. I thought, well, you know, there isn't any shots on that. It's just wishful thinking, and that, but this really puts it back. And more importantly than even the acoustic evidence, is he definitely shows the shot came from the front and uh, you know it appears there was two headshots now some of that at first glance might think well Vince we already knew that I've learned it from other books you have to read this this is a masterpiece trust me even sometimes if it's something you already know or think you know there's an entirely different level and there's so many more nuances in here and like I said I just can't recommend this one enough as well and another one of my top five. Might be a little surprising, I don't know. The Lee Harvey Oswald Files. And that is by Flip DeMay. And I think he's from Belgium, I think so. If I look in, sorry, Flip, if I got your country wrong, but this is brilliant. His first book, Cold Case Kennedy, is very good as well. This one's even better. As I also relate and give him proper attribution of my book honest answers it shows that there's no way that Oswald's rifle could have fired the fatal shots among other things it's just amazing again you might hear that and say well Vince I already kind of knew that from other books too trust me there's a lot of details in there that are amazing as I also source in my book like I said honest answers about the murder of President Kennedy highly recommended very well written very well researched so, so far, you know, just flipped the maze book. Last second in Dallas by Josiah Thompson. And then, like I said, there's JFK Assassination by Jim DiEugenio. Okay, two more. This one's a little harder to find. I don't know if it's on Kindle yet or not, but uh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The Warren Omission by Walt Braun. Just amazing, amazing book from 1996 honored to have a signed copy of this. You can sometimes find this on eBay. I think you can still get it this through Walt Braun himself, through his website. Just Google Walt Braun JFK. His website comes up. Um, brilliant, really is. And uh, just, again, when you hear these things, you might say, Vince, I already knew this as well. It's a total demolishment, is that a word? He demolishes the Warren Commission report and volumes. He does a terrific job, very witty and well-written and funny in places, of dissecting the report and the volumes. He gets all the salient points. He doesn't skip over or cherry pick. It's really, it's virtually page by page. This, Walt Braun is the guru when it comes to the Warren Commission report, the 888 page report, and the 26 volumes of hearings and exhibits. And again, don't be scared off whatever when you hear these things that might think at first glance, Vince, I already knew that. Trust me, you didn't. You have to get this book. And uh, by the way, I like the way the sky came out when I moved a little bit. Oh, well, it's not doing it now. But anyway, <laughs> got to get this. It's amazing. You don't already own it. Okay. Again, top five. Many amazing books. So don't take it the wrong way if I'm omitting anything. A lot of terrific books out there. A lot of terrific authors. Just my opinion after reading hundreds of books and whatnot. The Girl on the Stairs by Barry Ernest. Amazing book. 
it truly is. And it demonstrates that Oswald wasn't on the sixth floor. If Flip uh, DeMay's book, The Lee Harvey Oswald File, proves that Oswald's rifle couldn't have done it, and indirectly shows he was on the sixth floor, this book really does. Um, Barry Ernest is amazing. He tracked down Victoria Adams, Sandra Stiles, um, their boss, the name eludes me right now. Is it Dorothy Garner? Is that it? Sorry, off the top of my head. But amazing. Um, years of research here, decades really, and it's his journey. It's written like, sort of like Lifton, who ironically did the Ford. It's kind of written in like a Lifton style. It, it shows, it's his tale of what he went through, his journey in the case. And uh, yeah, really amazing. And uh, trying to get that sky to pop. Oh, there it is. Got the sky to pop out a little bit. Uh, if you saw that or not. <laughs> there it is, there it is. I hope it's like, a, like the whole video. That's beautiful with the sky in the background. I don't know if it goes away when I move back, but in any event. Top five for me. Really, really amazing books. Books that I've reread. You know, sometimes you get a book and once is enough, or you just research it, you skim read it and never look at it again. These books I've read multiple times. So they're, dare I say, entertaining as well. And although I've done this before, I'm gonna go through a little more detail on something else. Let me just put these down real quick. Okay go through my books maybe a little more detail just like the number five well i've written five books first one survivor's guilt the secret service and the fear to protect president kennedy and uh, this came out in 2013 now, i had privately published a version back in 1993 technically 1991 but it was called for national security and i scrapped it very few people on earth saw that one it came out in 1993 it used to be a spiral bond kinko's type of affair then it made it to online, it was free for a while, but then I massively updated, expanded, corrected it, and obviously overtly published it. It sold quite a few copies. Um, for an independent publisher, I think it's, this thing has sold well over 5,000 copies since 2013 in Kindle and paperback. Now that's modest compared to someone like Clint Hill now, but he's a principal in the case on the biggest publishing company on earth, so. It's done a damn good job of uh, getting around. And more importantly than that, the reaction has been really good. This is my decades long, I interviewed and corresponded with many of the agents who guarded or signed to President Kennedy. And by default, agents that protected the presidents down to FDR and up to Reagan. And uh, I'm very proud of this book. A lot of blood, sweat and tears went into this. And what it does is it shows that President Kennedy did not order the agents off his car, did not order the bubble top off, did not order the motorcycles away, did not uh, demand the trademark as the site assassination, etc. It also reveals uh, many new details a lot of people didn't know. Many pe people thought that uh, building rooftops were only guarded. Oh, so it responds to the assassination events. That only came about afterwards. Or they say, well, maybe in Washington, D.C. during inaugurals, but that's it. Turns off my research, and a lot of things came out after this book actually that corroborate even further. That's the first thing from the truth. As Ron Gardner told many millions of people on November 22nd on ABC, I have a video of that on my channel here. Um, for many presidents prior to JFK, building rooftops were guarded. That was common. And more important than even him saying that to millions of people, I actually have photos, films, and many newspaper articles and Secret Service documents that shows building rooftops were guarded by either police and or agents. This is separate from police and or military guarding the streets and the crowds, intermingling in the crowds, whatnot, undercover cops and whatnot. Um, they did this many times through many different cities across America. So there's that. And uh, yeah, and like again, it also shows that uh, the Secret Service was the only boss the President of the United States really had. And that comes from Harry Truman, Lyndon Johnson, Bill Clinton. Many people thought, well, these are just lowly Secret Service agents. Hey, the President is the boss. When it comes to his security, he is not. And Clinton Hill even admitted that, uh, well, the President can tell you what he wants done. That doesn't mean what you have to do it. And what we always used to do is listen to the president and did what we felt was best anyway. 
he said that in 2010 in a very obscure video I found. It's on, also on my channel, and I quote from it here. Um, see, there's an old saying, I think it was Keith Moon, who said, they remember your exits and your entrances and everything else in between doesn't matter. Well, I find that a lot of times with the assassination and whatnot, they, you know, when it comes to President Kennedy, they have gobs of film on the inauguration, the inaugural motorcade, and obviously on the assassination. But in between, it was very hard to find for many years. In fact, it's only been the last five or ten years that a lot of films and photos have come forward. Uh, just because of digitization, just because the copyright laws have uh, relaxed, a lot of the photographers, especially Cecil Stoughton and the White House photographers, plural, have passed on and made their stuff public domain, so you know, to pay massive fees and whatnot. So, so much of this material is available, you know, for public domain, it's on uh, on the internet and whatnot. And I can tell you, honestly, with a straight face, it's been the last five to seven years or so, maybe a little bit more in certain cases, where a lot of these films and photos have finally been available. So back in the 90s when I was writing, it was very few and far between to find pho photos and films of prior motorcades. It's until the Assassination of Records Review Board released documents, secret service documents and whatnot. It was extremely hard to get any secret service records to corroborate anything about prior, prior motorcades. And um, yeah, and so it used to just be like, uh, you know, you go off interviews and whatnot, and you had what you had out there as far as, you know, William Manchester and Jim Bishop and whatnot, but they were very misleading because they believe Oswald did it. They tried to shoehorn everything into kind of a situation where they blamed President Kennedy for ordering agents off the car, ordering the motorcycles away, ordering the bubble top away, which is all bull. But what it did is, it, for many years, these materials were hard to find. And it also didn't help that in 1995, the Secret Service destroyed presidential protective records after they were asked for them by the review board. So when these materials have become available in the last several years, five years, seven years, 10 years, it's just amazing. Not just the JFK Library, but all online, and people are just digitizing things. It used to be, you know, back in the old days, it used to be scanners or poor quality cell phone. It might have been digital, but a lot of stuff was blurry. Now everything's crystal clear and pristine, again, because copyright laws have been relaxed. You know, you can put copyrighted photos on Facebook. Pinterest has millions and millions, probably billions of photos of copyrighted images. The point being is, now it's so much easier to find these films and photos. Oh, that was the other thing that popped in my head I couldn't remember. remember now. There's also newspapers.com and similar sites where, for a fee, you can get old newspaper clippings, and that's where I find some amazing stuff about uh, JFK's motorcade was covered by the rooftops in Nashville, and Milwaukee, and Paris, France. The list goes on, so there you go. It's all my interviews and correspondence. Many of these agents have passed away. It's about 500 pages. There you go. Second book. This came out two years later in 2015. JFK from Parkland to Bethesda. The Ultimate Kennedy Assassination Compilation. This has done very well uh, as well. It's sold roughly around the same amount of copies so far to date. And the reaction has been good. This was actually available since around 1998. It used to be called JFK, The Medical Evidence Ref. Well, I've also spruced this up and updated it and obviously published it above board. And what this is, this is a reaction to what happened. I finally kind of got frustrated because I'd read books by some very good authors and researchers and whatnot, and they would always say stuff like, oh, 26 doctors said the back of the head was gone, and X amount of doctors said the throat, throat wound was an entrance wound, et cetera, et cetera. But I'd get frustrated because they'd show a few examples, then they'd cut away and change the subject. And I wanted to know exactly who said what, when they said it, and how many times they say it. So what I compiled here is literally every time Dr. McClellan, Dr. Perry, Dr. Jenkins, yeah, Ronald Coy Jones, uh, Nurse Audrey Bell, etc., 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 has spoken about the wounds. Any change in their testimony and in, in, in their interviews, you know, as far as uh, were they influenced by Posner and whatnot, Bugliosi to a certain extent. Somebody like Jenkins, you could really see that because from 1963 to 1978, he was basically a friend of the research community, the critical community, the conspiracy community, then from that time on, especially when Paul Hosner came out, he started to change his tune, saying it wasn't cerebellum, I never said cerebellum, and he'd moved the wound, and other people like James Carrigo sadly did that as well. But uh, the bottom line, this is also proof of a conspiracy because the overwhelming majority of the medical witnesses said the back, right rear of the head was gone, 
many of them said this was a throat wound, was an entrance wound. Several witnesses said it was either a right or left temple. It sounded like they might have just mixed up left or right, depending on their view of the president laying there. That a shot came from the front. Many of them said that shot came from the front. I interviewed on video Gerald Custer, who was from the Pittsburgh area. He died near 2000. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And uh, yeah, it was quite a coup, pardon the phrase. Um, being from Pittsburgh, I filmed him on video for what ended up in High Treason 2 by Harry Livingstone. We filmed it on November 22nd, 1991. And I also filmed it over two days for William Law's amazing book, In the Eye of History. That'd probably be top 10 for me. And uh, he passed, again, he passed away in 2000, the year 2000, but got on the video. I also got on video Aubrey Reich, and that was back on November 22nd, 1997 in Dallas. And he said the back of the head was gone. Gerald Custer was an interesting one for many years. He said the back of the head was gone. Now he still believed it was a conspiracy and frontal shots, but he started to change his tune because he was influenced by the late um, Tom Wilson, who also died in 2000 and also lived close by to him. And he started to move the wound a little closer to the front and stuff. He was, he was influenced by Tom Wilson in a bad way, but I'm getting off on a tangent. Now, the first book was mainly phone interviews and correspondence. Because these guys would never have consented to being on video. And this was back, you know, in the days when I was a young guy in my 20s and 30s. I didn't have the wherewithal and the money to fly around and try to get these guys on video. They would refu flat out refuse me anyway. But I was a young guy on the phone or in correspondence. So that's how they would get through the, you know, the phone. And this one was mainly correspondence. Very little phone work. But it was a couple videos, like I just told you. So that's that. <coughs> Okay, this is my third book, The Not-So-Secret Service, Agency Tales from FDR to the Kennedy Assassination of the Reagan Era. This also came out two years later, so first one was 2013, the second one was 2015, this is 2017. And this is kind of like a loose ends of my first book, Survivor's Guilt. Things that came out since, things that corroborate items in that book and other things. And I briefly talk about the other presidents, FDR, Truman, Eisenhower, you know, LBJ, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, basically. Um, but there's no doubt it's basically the loose ends. Um, it's done pretty well. It's a little bit of a mixed reaction on um, Amazon and whatnot. And it's mainly because it's only a little over 200 pages and it succeeds from a research standpoint, but from a book standpoint, it's a little up and down, I admit. Uh, although probably the greatest claim to fame in this was that my first chapter on Thomas B. Shipman, okay? Tom Shipman died October 14th, 1963. It was my major discovery. No one basically knew, for all intents and purposes, in the research community and the world at large, that a JFK Secret Service agent died unexpectedly before the assassination, not after. He died about a month before, and there's so many details. I could talk all day about him. I have a video on YouTube where I dissect everything. It's largely a silent video, like a PowerPoint video. There's a tiny bit of audio in there, but the main thing is, again, this gentleman, Thomas B. Shipman, was one of Kennedy's drivers, and he was looking forward to the Dallas trip. He had family in Dallas, and he was worried about the president's safety, but the bottom line is he died, and that allowed Bill Greer to drive Kennedy very suspicious death. He's the only person ever died at Camp David. He died allegedly of a heart attack. Yeah, he just passed an annual physical and agents have to pass the annual physicals and also this agent was something else because he drove presidents. So you really have to be healthy. He took his annual physical, everything was fine. The family was shocked to put him out. He died. He died at Camp David too. There was very little press about it. I'll get to that in a second. He was buried very fast. Like a couple days after he died, he was buried. Boom, that's it. Uh, the family said they were urged to bury him quickly. Dr. Berkeley took care of it. <laughs> and the family didn't throw any uh, wet rags on. I spoke to his daughter and other relatives, and they all find it suspicious. And, you know, they weren't looking for remuneration or publicity whatsoever. I contacted them, they didn't contact me, and they were hidden then, and they're still hidden. It is what it is, but. Um, Gary Byrne, former Secret Service officer under Clinton, he wrote like a number one major bestseller on the Clintons. I think it was Crisis of Character? Yeah. Well, he quotes from the book. That's probably the major claim to fame on this one. But a little bit of a mixed reaction. It's good research, but as a book, it's kind of up and down. Okay. 
I'm really proud of this one. This came out in 2018. Who's who in the Secret Service? History's most renowned agents. But here's the problem. It's a, very, a huge rebound over this as far as book goes, book quality. Very proud of it. Of all five of my books, this one's stiffed. It's only sold several hundred copies, to be honest with you. I guess what it is is no one really cares about the Secret Service. You know, when it's the Secret Service in the context of the assassination, like survivor's guilt, okay, you know, that does well. Okay, that also came out in the 50th anniversary, and that didn't hurt. But uh, I don't know, for some reason, this didn't capture people's imagination, but I'm very proud of it. I really am. And again, it's all the good, bad, ugly, famous, infamous ages of the Secret Service, literally from the beginning, as most people know. The Secret Service, ironically, was founded, formed by Secretary of Treasury Hugh McCullough right before Abraham Lincoln left for Ford's Theater. He basically approved what became the Secret Service. Lincoln was assassinated, and the rest is history. And this goes up to Trump because it came out in 2018, so it's all the best famous, bad... And there's a lot of stuff, obviously, related to Kennedy in this. And it's worth it if you're a Kennedy assassination researcher or not for the appendices in the back. Because it's a good synopsis, Cliff Notes version of uh, Secret Service failed President Kennedy. And it gives all the reasons why. You know, it's a picture of uh, Michael Payne and Lee Harvey Oswald. Many people thought they kind of looked alike, to put them mildly. That's our story. Um, but yeah, I'm very proud of it, but it kind of stiffs. But it does have one major claim to fame before I forget. <clears throat> the number one major bestseller last year, um, what the heck was it called? <laughs> um, wow, I am forgetting her title of her book right now. I was going to call it Epic Fail, but I forget what it's called. It's um, Carol Leoning's major book on, uh, this is what I mean about unscripted, is off the cuff. Uh, Carol Leoning's massive number one bestseller uh, about the Secret Service that came out last year. Um, well, anyway, she quotes from this book, so... Even though it's stiffed, yeah, many people heard of it indirectly because they read the title one up. But anyway, comes to my last one. Could literally be my last one because I don't know what else I could say about the assassination and Secret Service. I've said it all. I mean, at this point, I'd just be repeating myself. But never say never. Honest answers about the murder of President Kennedy, a new look at the JFK assassination, came out just last year, 2021. Big rebound of her last two books. It's done better than those two books combined. And it's doing as well as the first two books, not only in sales, but more importantly, in reaction from people. It's doing really, really well. And I uh, thank you. Thank you for all the reaction to all of the books, actually. I'm proud of them all, but this one's really good. This one is my take on the assassination. What happened was, I thought, mainly because it's stiffed, but also this I thought I said it all. Okay, this was going to be a fourth and final book. But what happened was, my cousin Marianne, we visited her right before, ironically, COVID hit in early 2020. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she said, Vin, I want to know, who killed Kennedy? Now, she's a rank amateur. She's not a researcher or nothing. I didn't have a good answer for her. I kind of gave her a schlock answer about the CIA and whatnot, but I didn't really feel confident. I was like, you know what? A light bulb went on. I got to tackle the assassination in general, not just the Secret Service angle. Well, that same night, I found out that Robert Conrad passed away, who's my idol, and he's one of the reasons I got into this whole thing. Now, you might say to yourself, what does Robert Conrad have to do with anything? Well, here's what he has to do. He played James West, a fictional Secret Service agent. Oh, back in 1978, I was 12 years old, and the High Select Committee on Assassination was going on, and I was very curious about that, about the, you know, I remember news reports about Jack Ruby and evidence of conspiracy. Well, that was all going on, kind of, you know, tickling my imagination. I also collected stamps and coins whenever I come across a picture of Kennedy on a stamp or coin. Mom and dad were still doing great, by the way, in their 80s. And um, they would regale me stories about his life and tragic death. Well, then what happened after that was I started getting to reruns of the Wild Wild West, which was a fictional take on the Secret Service. But what happened was the two melted together, so to speak. The Secret Service and the assassination. Oh, this guy's popping out a little bit. Now I gotta do that again. Get that, uh... <laughs> Trying to get that sky to pop behind me. Man, it's gotta just do something like that. But anyway, that was just silly, but... Anyway, um... So, again, so what happened was I got uh, out of my middle school library the book Four Days 
I don't know if it's a UPI or AP right on the top of my head. But anyway, there was a nice colored picture of Clint Hill by the limousine. It's a famous one you've all seen. And you can see Sam Kinney, the driver of the fall car behind him. I remember um, talking to my mom and dad about it, especially my mom. And who would think one day I would interview several times Sam Kinney and speak to him on the phone, Clint Hill and course along with him. And Clint Hill would mention me twice on television. It's surreal. But... I just became fascinated with the men around the president. I mean, it got to the point where when I'd see a Secret Service documentary on TV, a news special, a photo of him, I'd look past President Kennedy, look at the agents, and then eventually I learned their names, and eventually I spoke to them, corresponded with them, so on and so forth, became the Secret Service expert. Oh, by the way, some people say, oh, Vince, you're a self-described expert. No, I'm not. The Assassination Records Review Board called me a Secret Service expert. The History Channel and Newsmax TV called me a Secret Service expert. Vince Bugliosi, of all people, called me a Secret Service expert. So did many other people. So it's not self-described. It's by default. I work for a living, even though my books have done well and whatnot. People have this misnomer where they think, hey, you're an author, man. What are you doing working for a living? Well, you don't make consistent money enough to pay rent, mortgage, bills. Unless you're like a Harry Potter author or something like a romance novel or whatnot. It's just, by and large, you're working for a living as a professor, lawyer, or whatnot, and doing that on the side. So I'm not just for the money, it's labor, love, and truth. But anyway, I just want to point that out because sometimes uh, some of my critics, like Gerald Blaine and Clint Hill and whatnot, said self described expert while other people don't describe me. Oh, real quick, you're wondering about Newsmax. I'm a diehard Democrat and I'm not into. I won't get into that, but you, you know, by what he's saying, by the indictment, our Democrat where my heart lies. Well, Newsmax TV started to show reruns of The Men Who Killed Kennedy. Yeah, I was on The Men Who Killed Kennedy in 2003, the uh, 40th anniversary. History Channel showed it four times the major ratings. Excuse me. And uh, also, the DVD sold 50,000 copies. I didn't see a penny, but again, I'm not in for the money. The point being, it got really got out there. Well, for years, it wasn't around anymore. The DVDs got taken away and whatnot. Don't get it. Yeah, I think, you know, because of, you know, former presidents, Gerald Ford, uh, Carter, and some of the LBJ family were incensed by part nine. I was on part seven. Judith Baker was on part eight. But anyway, it was mainly part nine that buried deep six, seven, eight, nine. And it wasn't until Newsmax TV in 2019 started to show my episode and the other episodes, and they started to show them in 2020 again. So I've been on Newsmax TV, I don't know how many times, where they show the medical Kennedy. But I'm very proud. That was three and a half minutes. I was filmed 16 hours over two days, and Nigel Turner whittled me down to like three and a half minutes. Did a good job, though. But I'm really proud of my appearance on a coup in Camelot, which is a DVD, Blu-ray, and it's also uh, on, available on streaming and Amazon. You can watch on your television on Amazon Prime if you don't have the DVD and Blu-ray. I got about roughly 14 to 15 minutes on there, and the great narrator and actor Peter Coyote, he, uh, it's wild, surreal hearing my name from that guy. <laughs> I've seen so many documentaries of him narrating. What a wonderful voice. He was on the CNN um, documentary about the 60s, etc., etc. Um, I remember in 1982, I digress, I wanted to see Rocky III, but my parents said, no, we're going to see E.T., and who's in there, Peter Coyote, and who would think one day this guy would say my name several times and narrate my videotape segment. Yes, you can actually see me for a good, I don't know, 13, 14 minutes overall. But anyway, I'm very proud of that because it's updated. It was done in 2013, came out in 2016. It's a really good... Uh, analysis of my Secret Service um, research. My segment is on the main video on my YouTube channel and I'll probably link that and several other ones and I'm going to link my um, 2019 presentation. I'll get to that in a second. But anyway, I'm digressing way too much. Again, fifth book, Los Angeles by the murder of President Kennedy. What I wanted to do was kind of answer my cousin Marianne, but also come have a kind of a come to Jesus moment and realize that we don't have all the answers. This is honest answers for a reason. It's not trying to infer other books and other things. We're not, we're not honest. We're dishonest. I'm just trying to say, this is what we know. Stay the case. What we don't know, we're probably never going to know. So you're going to see some maybes. Not everything is definitive. I admit there's things I don't know. We're probably never going to know. The good news is we can definitely prove a conspiracy. I think it's solid. The first two chapters are worth the price of admission alone. Maybe some of the um, appendices as well. Uh, the master list of witnesses it's indicated JFK was shot from the front. 
and so on and so forth. Um, it's got the mother of all bibliographies. It's over a thousand books have been written on the assassination, and there's been more because this is up to 2021. But the point being is, it's very well illustrated, very well researched and documented. It's my take on the case in general. So you come away going, wow, there's no doubt there's a conspiracy. The bad news is why I named suspects who I think was involved, the organization of the people, can't prove it. You're never gonna, we're never gonna, never are we gonna be able to prove who shot President Kennedy. We're never gonna declaratively, in my opinion, state who was behind it. We strongly suspect, but that's it. But the good thing is we can demonstrate that Oswald didn't act alone. In my opinion, didn't act at all. He was not a shooter. He could have been involved, but he wasn't a shooter. He may or not have, may or may not have killed Tippett, but that's not what you think. In my opinion, I share Andy Purdy, the House Select Committee's opinion. I think that J.D. Tippett was the first Ruby, so to speak. Imagine if J.D. Tippett shot and killed Lee Harvey Oswald before Oswald was on record saying anything. Well, I think a lot of people just take it at it was the gospel, even more so. They were, oh, well, Oswald acted alone. You know, this brave police officer shot and killed him. There's more to it than that. You have to read the book. But uh, yeah, I have um, photos that have never seen the light of day, never been published. Um, a lot of new information, so it's not a rehash. But it's it's the depth of my research and knowledge and all the books I've read and uh, everything I've uncovered. But it's you know, my take on things. So you're going to get a lot of information. Uh, people have read this and said, it's been the overwhelming reaction has been, boy, Vince, so, you know, good book, it's a great book, et cetera, et cetera. But they also say, there's some things that I did not know. I thought it was going to be a rehash of stuff I already knew. It's not. It pointedly is not. And just like my other books, I tried to be as thorough as possible with it. But uh, this might, uh, you know, be similar to what I said in the last video. But, uh, it's probably it for me when it comes to conferences. I really think I've taken conferences as far as they can go. I, I'm not going to be in the habit of just going up to the dais and just repeat myself over and over again. Especially when there's YouTube and video and whatnot and DVDs and Blu-rays. I mean, my major conference appearance is 1991. I was at Fredonia, New York, the third decade conference of Harry Livingstone, Professor Jerry Rose, George Mike Weave, we got Bob Cutler, etc., etc. Okay, that was my debut. I was uh, just turned 25. In 1992, the American Popular Culture Conference in Louisville, Kentucky with George Evica again. In 1995, at COPA in Washington, D.C. In 1996, at COPA again in Washington, D.C. In 1997, November 22nd, 1997, I spoke at Dallas, Texas, JFK Lancer Conference. Uh, did some various local things, whatnot, cable access. Since I spoke at Slippery Rock University and whatnot. Well, again, I mentioned about the, you know, the man who killed Kennedy back in 2003 that also was on Newsmax TV recently. <clears throat> you also have a coup in Camelot, DVD, Blu-ray, streaming. It's on Amazon Prime. 2016, I spoke at Judith Baker's Trying Day Conference. And here's what I'm leading to. In 2019, I did the mother of all conference appearances at Judith Baker's Trying Day Conference. That's my best one. Conference presentation, that's it. I'll put a link to it here because some people have said they've had trouble finding it. I don't know why, you just go to videos on my channel. Go to channel, my channel, go to videos, and then over here on the right is an hourglass. You type in what you need to type in, it should pop up, but I will. I also have playlists that show up, but I will. Uh, I'll put the link on here just so people have easier access. But yes, yeah, a conference presentation, that's it. <clears throat> I won't rule this out, but I've kind of said everything I can when it comes to radio, Skype shows, all that stuff internet radio, radio in general, and they're all on there. So many things are archived online at the host's website and also on YouTube, like Brent Holland's uh, Brilliant Show and all the Leno Sanic Black Op radios and so on and so forth. Um, I've done all that. And I'm always getting an interest in the case. I kept on thinking that was it for videos. I found a few more. Maybe I'll always find videos here and there. Or maybe I'll just resort to making these kind of videos every once in a while. Who knows? But um, I feel like we're kind of maxed out on where we can go with this case. So many people have passed away. We're not trying to be a bummer, just being realistic. So many people have passed away. Okay, there's only far, so far you can take, take this because, again, so many people have passed away. So much time has passed. We all know by now, if you didn't know already, the government's never going to do anything about it. 
the sad reality, which, which does make me sad this part, is that at the end of the day, history books, so to speak, high school textbooks, whatnot, are always going to say Oswald. The only thing I think we did get is we got the word alleged in there. And sometimes there's a little footnote or sentence about the controversy. So we got that in there. But it's sad to say, they won. They won. You know, it is what it is. We've had the Warren Commission, the Hotslot Committee, that found a probable conspiracy. We've had the Assassination Records Review Board that did a not so secret medical investigation, which is brilliant. Like right? Doug Warren and whatnot. His books would be my top 10 as well. Uh, we're waiting for David Lifton's follow up book. He swears he's working on it. He swears it's going to be released. But David looks great, but he's in his 80s. He better come out with it soon. I mean, what the heck? Yeah, but anyway. So I feel we're never going to get justice for JFK. We're never going to, going to we're never going to know the full truth. We're never going to know who the shooters are. In my opinion, we're never going to know exactly who was behind it, other than sus suspicion. We'll be able to prove a conspiracy, which my last book does. But the unsatisfying thing for John Q. Citizen is they want to know who killed Kennedy. You know what I'm saying? They want to know exactly who was the shooter behind the picket fence or in front, whatever. And they want to know exactly who the mastermind or masterminds were. And, you know, you can sit here like a part or a game and name people off. You might even have good evidence of it to a certain extent. I use evidence in quotes, but can you prove in a court of law that this person was a shooter or this person was behind it? In my opinion, you can't. At least by the rigid standards of today and all the times I've seen court TV, true TV, other type of things on television, whatnot, even just going through the. <laughs> I should bring this up like the OJ case or whatnot. But the, but the bottom line is that's why that's why it's kind of unsatisfying. That's why it's circular. You know, we can show there's a conspiracy, but we can't nail it down. John Q. Citizen, they're in the sound bites, they have a low attention span, they want to know who killed Kennedy. Then they want to change the channel and watch the Cowboys game or the Steelers game. You, you know, you get my drift. <clears throat> that's why in one respect we had the Oliver Stone movie that came out in 1991. And it Definitely energized people. Did the movie did amazingly well. It created the Assassination Records Review Board and all those files were released because of the JFK Records Act. But dare I say, many of those same people, probably the next morning, they woke up and they were like, "Hey, who's playing on NBC tonight and whatnot? You know, football and whatnot." I mean, that's just a sad, cold reality. You know, other people that write about the case, research it, or massively into it, and even people like us, still. Yeah, and so many people have other lives. They have bills to pay, mortgage, rent, children, jobs, other things going on, health concerns, the list goes on. So it's easy to get obsessed and all into the case, but you got to realize there's only so much you can do. There's only so much individual people can do. There's a lot of um, constraints on the case. And again, what we can know, this is 2022. And... Another thing, too, like I said in my last video, we're never going to agree. We will never know the whole truth. We're never going to know the shooters. In my opinion, probably never going to know who was behind it, but we're never going to agree. I always use this little uh, scenario. Imagine if the fantasy came true and the government admitted there was a conspiracy, but they came out with something real, real conservative. They just said, yeah, it was Oswald and a couple Cubans and Ruby, and that was it. Even if it turned out that, that was true, do you know how many people, especially in the research community, wouldn't believe it? This is a limited hang on. This is bullshit. It's my suspect. And put this under here, whatever your suspect is, FBI, Mafia, CIA, etc. The Illuminati, <laughs> all that stuff. So you got that. So even if the fantasy did come true, it's still not going to satisfy people because people do not agree. Now, while the level of scholarship has gone way up, the, the books in the last 5, 10, 15 years or so, maybe a little longer, since this accident record review board have come out, are better than all the other books in the past combined. And I saw it, say that with all due respect. I mean, those books are amazing, legendary by Harold Weisberg, Mark Lane, and whatnot. If it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be us. So I hold those people in tremendous respect and value, and they're the Hall of Famers. But, yeah, it was limited access and knowledge at the time. Sometimes before the internet, before the Assassin Records Review Board, there was a guessing game, theorizing, there was so much stuff that was under lock and key, so to speak, in the archives and whatnot. People want things that were not accessible. Which leads me up to another thing that's kind of disturbing. I have a TikTok channel It's doing very well does very well with Kennedy images, videos, whatnot, and uh, 
very happy about that. That's the good news. But the bad news is, and I think I brought this up the last time, John Q. Citizen again. Many people believe there's a conspiracy, although supposedly polls are not as big as they used to be on the case, like what people believe and whatnot. But the thing that's really depressing to me is how many people believe that Greer shot Kennedy. I'm so sick of hearing that. The average person on the street believes there's a conspiracy, but they always thought, yeah, I think the driver shot Kennedy. In crystal clear copies of the Bruder film, even on decent copies of the Bruder film, you can see Greer's not turning around with a pistol and shooting Kennedy. It's the bro cream. It's the, the sunlight off Roy Kellerman's forehead. Do we even have to get into the manner and logic of it? Do we really need to get into what the people in the car said and all the years afterwards that Greer was living, all these other people were living, Jackie Kennedy, the Connellys, no one ever said anything. No one ever came forward and said, Jesus, it was the driver in front of us and shot at him. You know, the witnesses, all some people try to like uh, shoehorn a witness or two and say they came from within the car. That means it came from within the car. But the bottom line is this theory just went on die. It's the in my opinion, it's the number one theory out there for crap, but for popularity, I'd say hands down the driver shot Kennedy is the number one theory. And that's based on what I've seen on TikTok, what I've seen on YouTube, what I've seen online in general, it's obscene. To a lesser extent, the other thing, it's a uh, crappy theory, except for one caveat, is the whole George Hickey shooting Kennedy. Now, the only thing that's good about that is the original proponent of this was the late Howard Donahue, who I spoke to in correspondent, by the way, in ironically small world. He served in the Air Force unit at World War II with Rufus Youngblood, small world. Well, he believed that George Hickey, Hickey accidentally killed Kennedy. Because he said, there's no way that shot came from Oswald's rifle, the type of wound, the direction and whatnot. But because Howard Donahue believed his government, okay, he fought and sought a benign reason for the assassination. So he thought, well, it was George Hickey and it was an accident. So that was his solution. But the good thing about his theory is it shows through ballistic evidence that the fatal shot did not come from Oswald's rifle. So that's the only caveat to his theory. Just like the smoking gun, um, that uh, Reels documentary, Colin McLaren, who I spoke to, I think I'm on one page of his book. He, uh, you know, carried further after Howard Donahue passed away, the whole thing went George Hickey shooting Kennedy. And that's like the second most popular theory. So I do not believe George Hickey shot the president. That's moronic. But the good thing about his theory is he demonstrates through ballistic evidence there's no way the fatal shot came from Oswald's rifle. Uh, some other obscene theories, I guess the one that comes to mind is some people think Jack, he shot Kennedy. I've seen ones where the Connolly shot Kennedy. Um, it's a Jackie shooting Kennedy, horrible. The Connolly shooting Kennedy, horrible. I've seen someone was in the trunk of the limousine and shot Kennedy. <clears throat> I've seen all that stupid QAnon crap that JFK still loves, those JFK Jr. <laughs> that stupid stuff. People just get into things where they just want to believe. It's almost like an act of faith, you know? They say we're like all into faith and belief and whatnot. It's these wackos, wackadoos that believe this stuff. It's crazy. So it pollutes the community, makes us look bad, because then we look like tinfoil hat people, conspiracy theorists and whatnot. But uh, there you go. So uh, that's the state of the case in 2022, my five favorite books. Little snops of my five books, the state of the case and where I'm at where I'm going with it. I, I view myself as basically semi-retired. I feel like I've taken as far as I can go. I really have. I'll always have an interest. My books will always be available on Kindle and paperback, God willing, on my YouTube, and on massive presence online. I would never say never to another book or whatnot, but I think I've taken as far as I can go. Now, I've eaten, eaten my words before because I thought well, I was done after my third book, fourth book, whatnot. In fact, I didn't envision any book beyond my first book. It was all kind of a fluke that the other books came to be. But in my mind, I'd just be repeating myself. I've said everything I can hand. But you can still have an interesting case and when I read all books, just like you guys, not everybody writes books and appears at conferences other than maybe in the, in the stands and the seats. So, um, anyway. Yeah, let's get the sun to pop out again. I don't know if it does it or not. Or maybe it's doing it the whole time. From here, every once in the, the, the sky kind of pops out, depending on where I'm. Wait, there. I think I did it. All right. Sorry for being goofy. And uh, this is totally unscripted, as if you couldn't tell by now. And uh, this is Vince Palmer signing off. Thanks. Hey, guys. 
Fitz Palomar here. Well, seeing that you all have an insatiable appetite and desire for more JFK assassination videos, and seeing that I am truly out of any new material, honestly, I don't have it. I thought the next best thing to do would be to perhaps post some largely overlooked videos I posted actually years ago now. My YouTube channel's been up since 2007. As well as some pretty cool compilation videos. So again, maybe like largely ignored videos that get a lot of views, likes, comments, as well as some cool compilation videos. Because the well was dry and that was going to be the way it was going to end stand for now until I came across something new. But again, uh, I got to hand to you guys. You guys really uh, have an insatiable appetite for this stuff. I mean, every day, all through the day and night, I'm getting tons of comments, likes, messages, fans, please, we need more. You guys are like crack addicts. I mean it in a good way. That's a good way to say crack addict, but anyway, yeah, I understand. So what I'm going to do is uh, soon I will upload uh, some more compilations and largely ignored videos. And someone was wondering, like, hey, Vince, do you sleep? I mean, good. How long does it take to do us? It takes no time at all, man. If you have the videos transferred to MP4s, which they all are, I don't know, seconds, minutes, nothing, nothing to it time-wise at all. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, hey, beautiful day out here. You can see. But anyway, I don't think you care about that. You care about the videos, and they'll be coming. So, thanks for your support, and take care.